Hi, this is Walter Weesey with Yellowstone Country Fly Fishing and Parks Fly Shop with my weekly fly tying video for Sunday, November 15th, 2020. Uh, what I'm going to be doing here is a uh, really, really good bug. This is my probably the best bug I came up with during the 2020 season. Um, for right now, I'm calling it a pennant dun uh, because of the wing, and that's that's the main thing with this fly is the wing construction is fairly unusual, and this is a very very small fly. This is an 18, you know, on an emerger hook, which is a quite a small hook, and uh, so you know, in comparison to a straight shank hook, this would be a 20 or a 22, but it's got that great big visible buoyant wing on it, and so this is a small fly that is super visible and floats well in fairly rough water and uh, the wing construction on it I'm, I'm pretty proud of. I don't know of any flies that use the precise wing method I do on this, and so I'm, I'm really looking forward to showing this one. Um, I'm, like I said, I'm probably the best fly I came up with this season, and, and it worked really well. I only came up with it in September, and so it was the last three weeks or so of my float season I was using it. And I tied it in this purple one that I'm going to be doing today, and then also in copper, uh, which are kind of my attractor colors in the fall. You know, when I'm tying a mayfly pattern, I use uh, purple or copper. Copper on bright days, purple on cloudy days. And I don't think there's any reason this wouldn't work in all of your, your basic mayfly colors. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get started here. All right, so my hook here is a Komodo K2487, size 18, with just, just a standard curve shank emerger hook. And my thread I have on there is 80 purple. I'm going to tie in the body material before I tie in the tail, which is a little unusual. And that's Vivas Body Quill in Claret for this one. And then I would use kind of a brown if I was tying it in, uh, you know, brown. Now, I, on a bigger one, I'd actually just tie this material in and use it as thread, uh, kind of for the back half of the fly. But on the 18s, 20s, anything smaller than that, of course, um, the, the body quill is actually a little thick uh, to use as thread, even if you're being really careful with it. And so that's why I tied it in first. And then I actually have it on a bobbin there. And I just hung that on my materials clip. And then I'm going to come forward a little bit here. I'm going to make a couple extra turns of thread right there. Come forward slightly. And then my tail on this fly is going to be kind of a medium pardo, you know, very well speckled Coq de Leon. And I'm going to pull off roughly five fibers. I, I like fairly thick tails on, uh, on these flies. Just because, you know, like I said, I'm fishing fairly rough water. I'm fishing the Yellowstone mostly with these. And uh, having, you know, a lot of times on a small, delicate dry like this, you'd see two or three tails. And I just think the five tails, you know, help keep it upright a little better. And I'm going to try to align those so the cur natural curvature of that uh, Coq de Leon is a little bit upward. It's no deal breaker if you don't quite manage that. Um, and I, I like to tie these tails pretty long, uh, one and a half, two times the shank length. Uh, again, just, you know, mayflies actually have pretty long tails, a lot of them. And um, especially the little the little betas, little blooming olives, and, uh, you know, the PMDs as well. And uh, I don't think the fish care if they're even a little bit too long. And like I said, I think it helps the flotation a little bit, or at least the orientation. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap my thread forward uh, to about there. And then grab that, uh, that material, the uh, body quill. And I'm going to just grab those tails, kind of pull them out of the way, and then just make, this is a little bit awkward here, just make a couple turns right behind that tailing material there. Kind of stand that up and spread it out some. And you'll notice here, uh, that's what that looks like now. You see those tail fibers are spread out. Again, that's going to give this fly a wide footprint and help that flotation. Um, drop my bobbin cradle, put the... Uh, the other thread on it, which I should have done before. And then now I'm going to go ahead and just make um, sort of touching turns, you know, just a single layer of the Vivas body quill up the shank. And hopefully you can see there uh, that's getting kind of a subtle segmentation um, on it and, uh, you know, a little bit of shine. And uh, I like my mayflies to have a slender body with segmentation and a little bit of shine. In fact, if you go over to my blog, I just wrote an article yesterday on kind of the three common features of mayfly patterns that I tie. Um, every single mayfly I tie kind of has um, two out of three of these, these common features, and a lot of them have three out of three. 
and uh, that's really what prompted me to tie this fly is because it, it you know it's a good illustration of that but uh, I'll include the link to that in my uh, in my uh, you know description down below the fly here and I do during the winter try to post you know roughly weekly articles etc on my blog um, just to you know get people paying attention to my site and booking some trips so I went ahead and put a little bit of head cement on that body material um, that's more for reinforcement than anything else now uh, the next step here is going to be to tie in the hackle which is going to be uh, this kind of, I think this is a uh, a done grizzly. In, in other words, it's it's looks like grizzly, but it's sort of washed out. Now, this is kind of unusual one to find. If you don't find that, it's fine. Um, you could just use a basic light done, or possibly medium done, um, or done badger would actually I think look really good on this fly too. So I'm going to come in here and just strip off the fluff there. And I'm going to tie that in kind of on my side, sort of the bottom of the shank there, and about there. And then make a thread base to the eye. And then here's where the magic really, really happens on this fly. I am going to tie in a just huge wing on this fly. Uh, you're going to be shocked when you see how much wing there is here. And what this is, is Montana Fly Company Widow's Web in silver. And that's about the same size wing I would use on... That's almost as much wing as I would use on a, uh, you know, like a size 14 Bob Hopper or a, uh, certainly on a size 14 Hazy Cripple. You know, this is a, that's a big, big, big wing for this, this size of a fly. And um, I'm going to tie that in here and it's going to look way, way too big. Um, but you'll, you'll understand in a second here. So just I like to do just one turn over the top of the shank and then reposition like that before I tighten everything down. And I'm going to make quite a few wraps over that uh, because I use that, you know, I want, I'm going to wind up wrapping a hackle over this too. And so you need to have enough of a thread base there um, to work that way for that. And then once I've got that in, I'm going to make a turn or two just right around that little post out the front there. Uh, and that's going to help stand that up away from the eye and make things easier to tie in when you go fishing. Okay, and before I wrap the hackle, I like to come in with some super glue here and just put that on the underside of the tie-in point there to reinforce both the hackle and the wing. And then looking at the wing right now, um, you can see how it's down. I mean, it's a caddis wing basically right now. I mean, this is essentially how I would tie a wing on a caddis cripple. Um, if you go way back, I've tied a couple of blue ribbon flies as caddis cripples. And really, this, as it is right now, this is the wing construction for the uh, almost their betas, which is one of their their uh, mayfly patterns and actually that's that's what I based this fly on that's what I was tying to start with and it just didn't work quite how I wanted it to on the Yellowstone and so I started fiddling with it and and that's what led to this uh, this pattern I'm tying now but be and so as of right now it's essentially an almost their betas but then I'm gonna wrap the hackle and then cut the wing in a certain way so I'm gonna grab that hackle and try to make two turns right behind that with that wing you can notice already that that's standing up a little bit um, and then I'm going to come up onto the that little thread bump make one two three turns and then bring that back up underneath the hook eye there ahead of the the, 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 uh, the wing and I'm no more turns ahead of the wing I'm just going to tie that off kind of on the near side there right in front of me and hopefully that doesn't uh, come loose because that, that just broke on me but so normally what I would do here if something like that happened this is this is not what I would prefer to do on this fly but I'll just kind of show you that that uh, hackle just broke when I was tying it off so either I could reshoot this whole sequence or what I can do here is just this and not exactly ideal I probably wouldn't want to sell one of these now but I'd certainly have clients use it you see how I work, work back through that with my my thread a little bit um, that's the other reason I super glue that because that gave me that little bit of time to, uh, you know, to fix that essentially. That might not be all that durable. Like I said, this one is, pr is not getting sold. This one's going to my box. Um, but then anyway, I'm going to go ahead and whip finish that and probably made an extra turn or two of thread there on my whip finish again, just to hopefully catch that hackle in there a little better. And then clip that and I'm going to pull the kind of long tag here forward and down and then trim that off pretty short. I don't want a big bulky caddis head on that fly. Um, and so, you know, you see how I, I took those turns around that little bump there and uh, you can actually 
see the eye is pretty accessible. By the way, that hackle, I should have mentioned this, um, that hackle is 1x oversized. You see that's very wide footprint there. And the reason I can get away with that is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to go ahead and, and chop that off. Um, pretty much tied up to the shank. And so that gives it kind of a gray underside. Um, it's also going to make that thing float down, you know, flat in the surface film, which that's another feature of, uh, besides the slender app, basically the three features I've mentioned in my blog post, I tie my flies with a slender, kind of glossy, segmented abdomen. Um, I tie them with a big, bulky, synthetic wing post, and then I, uh, I tie them to, to look distressed. And clipping that hackle like that, not only does it help them float correctly, but it makes them float down in the surface film like it's a distressed insect. Anyway, kind of the final thing on this fly, you notice I haven't done anything to the wing here um, after I uh, tied it in, or after I wrapped the hackle, and yet it's still sticking up a little straighter than it was when I started. And to really push that that sense, I'm going to come in here with my, my scissors, and I'm going to trim that. You notice I'm holding my scissors vertically here. Uh, in fact, this might be easier if I do this. Um, Normally I would trim this from the top, but I'm just doing it like this, so it's probably easier to see. But you see, my th my scissors are vertical to the, or perpendicular to the hook shank here, so it's essentially straight up and down. I'm going to grab that material, and I'm going to trim it at an angle. And I'm going to wind up trimming off some hackle fibers too, but that's okay. Uh, you saw I trim that at like a 30 degree angle, roughly. And so instead of sticking, looking like it's sticking back, a whole bunch like a caddis wing, now it's sort of general orientation is upward. Um, slightly back, but upward, and um, if you actually look at a real mayfly, that's how they look. But that's a, you know, that's a big, big clump of, of material there on such a small fly, and that's going to hold a lot of floatant. Um, you know, this is a hydrophobic synthetic yarn, so it's going to shoot off water on the back cast, and it's going to be very, very visible in the water, too. Um, Grey bug worked, worked exceptionally well, um, you know, as a very small sort of morning attractor before the hatch really got started, uh, like in the month of September. As always, thanks for watching, and... Uh, you know, feel free to leave any comments below. Um, feel free to give me a call, book some guide trips. I've already got uh, quite a few trips booked for 2021, actually. Uh, let's hope everything is coming back to normal by then, or at least as normal as it was over the summer this year, because uh, certainly no fishing to do right now um, with the virus numbers going up the way they are. But uh, obviously the with the uh, potential vaccines coming through and so forth, um, hopefully that'll be under control soon so wear your masks stay healthy and uh tie some of these for your you know possibly winter fishing um but uh certainly spring and fall fishing i think that's going to work great you know wherever you are